Hi, Elaine here. Today I'll be showing you how to use a great free app to quickly and easily create a Mavericks boot disk for your Mac. It's always a good plan to be prepared for disaster, and never more so than when it comes to your computer. And step one of that is creating an emergency boot disk for your Mac. There are several ways to make a boot disk, but using DiskMaker is one of the most hands-off, for which read, terminal free, ways that you can do it. And that's the way that I'll be showing you today. As with previous versions of OS X, since Lion in 2011, Mavericks is available only as a download from the Mac App Store. It's a free update, so it's simply a matter of downloading it from the store. It will be downloaded into your Applications folder and automatically run from there. And there's one thing to be aware of. As soon as it's installed from your Applications folder, it will be deleted. You can, of course, re-download it, but that takes time and bandwidth. So you have a couple of options. One, you can stop the automatic install and make a boot disk before it gets deleted. Or better still, make a copy of the installer in another location for future use. Now, DiskMaker is available from DiskMakerX.com. It's a free app, although they do accept donations should you find it useful. So download and install it and you'll be good to follow along. So with the Mavericks installer downloaded and DiskMaker installed, we're ready to roll. DiskMaker supports the creation of boot disks for three different versions of OS X. Mavericks 10.9, Yosemite 10.10 and El Capitan 10.11. So choose Mavericks. And as I've said, by default, Mavericks is downloaded to your Applications folder, but it doesn't need to be in that location for the following process to work. In fact, best practice would be to move that installer to a permanent location rather than let OS X delete it from the drive after installation. DiskMaker makes an attempt to locate the installer, and I've moved my copy to the desktop so we can see it. DiskMaker finds it in that location, but if DiskMaker can't find the installer or you'd like to use a different version of the installer from the one that it does locate, then use the Use Another Copy button and select the installer that you want to use. The next step is to select the drive or device to be used as the basis of the installer. As a minimum, that needs to be an 8 gig USB stick, but you do have other options as this dialog box mentions. What it's talking about is taking a larger disk and partitioning it into multiple partitions and then installing different OS X versions to each partition. It's the kind of thing a geek does, and I have one of those too. Next, you'll need to select the disk that you want to use as the boot disk, and DiskMaker will display all the disks it finds, and you just need to select the one you want. And I've only got one here, so I'll select that one. A rather scary dialog box is next, warning you that the disk that you've selected is about to be erased. So confirm that this is the correct disk, and then it's a simple matter of clicking the Erase then Create Disk button. Now this dialog is warning you to expect to be prompted to enter an administrator password, and then confirm you wish to continue. So there's the prompt, enter the password, and continue. DiskMaker starts copying files, and it can take a while depending on the speed of your machine and the speed of the drive that you've selected. For me with a USB 2 drive, that took about 7 to 8 minutes. When the copying is complete, the installer is displayed in the Finder window. And don't miss the rather alarming sound when the job finishes. I know I didn't, and it was rather alarming as I wasn't expecting it. Are you ready? Yes, that's the notification to tell you that DiskMaker has finished its work. So let's recap. Download Mavericks from the Mac App Store. Make a copy of the installer and leave that somewhere safe. Download and install DiskMaker, and you can find that free of charge at DiskMakerX.com. Make your disk, and it's always a good idea to check your boot disk actually works by booting to it. You don't want the first time you find out it's not working properly to be when you really need it. Well, I hope that helps you. And if you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com VIP. And if you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up. And I always appreciate it when you share it with your friends. If you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.